everyone uh, good evening i'm nire kokilarandar on behalf of uh, civil engineering sectional committee and uh, representing uh, professional review sub committee so we are meeting here for a special program for a special session uh, that is for awareness for civil engineering on professional review process and how to face confidently so we have a special and prominent uh, resource person uh, with us uh, for today's session and uh, everything is fine and this is the first session uh, that is organized by uh, professional review subcommittee of uh, civil engineering sectional committee so because the time is very much important so we are now straight forward going to the session and uh, the resource person will be introduced by uh, engineer madam kamala gunawardena from a deputy team leader of the central expressway construction project stage 1 so she is uh, a very important uh, person and representing the council of engineer uh, sort of sri lanka so i would like to invite uh, engineer madam kamala gunawardena uh, to introduce our prominent resource person for the session over to you yeah. madam kamala thank you engineer kokila good evening to all of you you can hear me kokila kokila yes we can hear you yeah thank you uh now you know i'm kamal gunawardena uh highly consultant and i'm working as a council member uh, and chairing the knowledge sharing session sub committee of civil engineering sectional committee welcome you all for today's lecture uh actually i will uh, brief very very short introduction about this uh, our what we are doing with the civil engineering sectional committee uh, what our plans are so normally uh, actually this will be uh, helpful for you all to quickly uh, get on to our next programs so according to our schedules of civil engineering sectional committee technical programs are planned on tuesdays and thursdays now the tuesdays programs actually we are reserved for medium rise building designs and constructions this is a series of lectures uh, and already we have done four and uh, please remember that you all have to register through mis of isl okay now wednesday is a plan for non technical presentations but still you can join if you are getting the link and the the so uh, this details now thursday is like today we have we are going to do multidisciplinary programs they are technical presentations and we have done with two programs up to now so that's a briefing uh, what have been done so far under our sectional committee and you all can participate in future events as schedules and uh, they, they 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 will be counted as cpd as well today's webinar is awareness for civil engineers on professional review process and how to face confidently this is organized by professional review subcommittee chaired by engineer kokila arandara uh, under civil engineer sectional committee i am definite that you will be very impressive and effective webinar for you all as associate members to guide yourselves for the professional review examinations yeah dear participants uh, i would like to take this opportunity to invite you all to work with us in the subcommittees like the moderator here today engineer kokila randara he is also an associate member and you all can join hands with him and others who are uh, actively participating with the subcommittee works and actually then you all can come forward with your requirements what you want as associate members which you know will so then we can what we can do from isl we will as senior engineers in the construction industry we all can get together and help you all we are starting the today's event right now and it is an honor for me to take, make this instigating not even though the speaker today is a well known personality who needs no introduction he is engineer kpiu darwapala past president of the institute of engineers sri lanka and he was the president for the session 2020 and 2021 he has served the engineering institutions not only on motherland but also international 
I'm so proud to read out his record at la of latest key involvements in very prestigious capacities. Let me read out. Uh, Engineer Dharmapada has served the institution of the, in the capacity of the chairman of the Functional Standards Management Committee and Educational Committee previously. He also was a member of the panel for professional review examination of the Institution of Civil Engineers, United Kingdom, and serves as a committee member of the Executive Committee of the Sri Lanka Association of Institution of Civil Engineers, United Kingdom. Since 2008, he has registered with the Institution of as an International Professional Engineer in 2008, and a registered adjudicator uh, with the Institution and the Construction Industry Development Authority, that is called CEDA. He has many years of experience in the field of civil engineering over the years, and I would say is a prominent civil engineer and. Without further ado, I call now Engineer KPIU Dharmapala, our past president, to take over the Zoom platform. Now, please enjoy this important lecture this evening. So, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Engineer Kamala. Uh, before that, uh, is, is it uh, audible to everybody? Yes, sir. You can hear. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for organizing this uh, event. Uh, Engineer Manjula Samrasinga, then uh, Engineer Kokila Arambara, then uh, Engineer Madam Kamala Gurwardana. Uh, you all are, I think, uh, taking very keen interest on these young engineers. And uh, not only you, it is from our side also, it is our responsibility to guide young engineers. Uh, to become more and more corporate members of the institution. So I think time is limited again uh, at seven o'clock, you are having another meeting. So I will share my screen. Yeah, uh, today I think uh, the topic given is uh, awareness for civil engineers on professional review process and how to face it confidently. Uh, this is the first time I'm conducting uh, this kind of a lecture in a remote platform. Uh, I used to have this kind of uh, so many sessions uh, before COVID and before becoming the president-elect. Uh, I conducted this uh, throughout the country uh, based on uh, provincial chapters. Uh, I think uh, this is mainly for these young engineers who are sitting for this uh, professional review examination. So I think uh, now uh, more than nearly uh, 50 or some uh, participants are there. Uh, we will uh, go to this one. So first I want to put the question, why do students fail in this PR examination? Uh, because uh, I know, every of, uh, not only myself, you all are know that uh, you have become, or you have come to this stage yeah, now you are. Uh, I came to know that most of these uh, members participating are associate members. From your, if you look back, you have come through passing so many hurdles. One thing is, uh, you passed when you were school time, you passed your GCE O level, then you passed your GCE A level. So most of the people you thought at that time GCA level bright students they have dropped and uh, you have selected you managed to uh, success in that exam after that you entered into university 
from university following your degree course degree program for four years now you have come to the industry so after if you think about this journey you have come a very long way passing many many difficult stages but when you are sitting for this exam professional review examination uh, some are failing what is the reason for this uh, exam the reason is students do not work hard and prepare adequately because uh, you are from your side uh, also it is fair you have to attend for your office work as well as some are got married and uh, you are having your family uh, matters also your kids are there so those things are there so less uh, time time allowed you for preparing for this exam is much less than compared to your university or school era so in university or your school examinations uh, you prepared very well now here especially special specially set up rules are there for this pr rules what we call pr rules pr stands for professional review rules uh, some uh, most of these students they do not go through uh, most of these candidates they do not go through this professional review rules if you go to isl web, website it is uh... hello uh, can you hear me yes yeah uh, so uh, from your side this candidate side they do not read enough technical literature national news newspapers uh, international journal journals or simply not interested in topics other than their routine works that is the main reason uh, now these are the mainly identified areas uh, that uh, students uh, candidates are facing uh the reasons uh, one is uh, poor reading habits most of these candidates when we are having this uh, review we noted that their reading habits are very poor then lack of knowledge of common affairs especially economics social issues political issues locally and internationally then uh, inability to correctly understand the question when uh, during the viva or when the uh, a paper question or in b paper questions uh, they are not properly understand the questions and uh, they are writing uh, something uh, has no relevance to the question then inability to structure a uh, response to a question that is also uh, connected with the earlier one uh, they are not uh, writing uh, directly what the question is asking for then uh, expressing their views clearly or concisely sometimes they are going to write very long sentences and uh, ended up with making so many mistakes uh, ultimately the uh, this linguistic problem that is uh, english language uh, communicating in english language communication means uh, not only uh, oral but writing also both uh, there is a problem in that also when we consider these six factors uh, those are contributing for this uh, failure of this examination
now uh, new professional uh, review rules are there there's a manual uh, earlier manual that was effected from uh, 22nd march 2021 uh, now very recently uh, last week i think the second one uh, latest one issued uh, that is uh, effective from uh, 6th january 2022 so in this book uh, all these rules are there i will uh, take uh, the most important things and uh, uh, explain you uh, but it does not mean uh, that uh, you are once you follow this one everything is okay but you are kindly requested to go through this uh, visit the isl website and uh, go to professional review rules and uh, read the relevant thing there are so many things uh, which are not relevant to you uh, some are for research uh, candidates academics uh, there are another route uh, electrical civil mechanical various various things are there so you select the relevant thing and uh, you have to get a thorough knowledge about this professional review rules this uh, professional review rules are set out in the manual that is mainly for acceptance of a candidate into the class of corporate membership of the institution so corporate membership of the institution uh, means what Uh, the need to become a corporate member is uh, you ha you have to fulfill the required training experience and expected competences together with the procedure according to which candidates may apply for election and attend the professional review are set out in these rules so the, in these rules very clearly say what are the things that you have to fulfill what are the Uh, things that you have to submit for this examination all these things are very clearly explained in this uh, manual so if i ask this question uh, who is an engineer uh, some uh, most of the places uh, when i participated in uh, physically had this seminar uh, most of uh, participants couldn't answer so an engineer is uh, you can have this uh, in your mind a professional practitioner of engineering concerned with applying scientific knowledge mathematics and ingenuity an engineer is that is the different an engineer is concerned with applying scientific knowledge mathematics and ingenuity uh, to develop solutions for technical problems so engineer is a professional practitioner he is having a scientific knowledge mathematics and ingenuity so the you i think uh, you may have come across very recently there is a big uh, talks when cross regarding this uh, new technology stream some they said they are also graduate they are also followed four year or three year courses uh, but uh, isl uh, is not in agreement with that because all engineers they are coming from advanced level mathematics uh, physical science stream where they have followed mathematics and physics that is why scientific knowledge and mathematics here specifically mentioned here so uh, this technology stream uh, that is the different they don't have uh, this uh, physics and chemistry or mathematics knowledge what a engineer needs so engineers uh, design you know material structures uh, other systems various things uh, and uh, considering the safety and cost so one thing is engineer should be very cost conscious uh, otherwise if you are ending up any project or anything with uh, uh, the way the cost that you want uh, then you we can't consider the that uh, particular project manager Uh, director or project director who is he is a very competent person because uh, you have to be work within your budgets so this word is uh, coming down from uh, latin uh, from uh, ingenium means cleverness so now you can see uh, engineers are clever people bright people as i said earlier you have come through so many her passing uh, hurdles Uh, and this name engineer as it derived from the latin word ingenium uh, that's a meaning is cleverness 
now the engineer after some time you wanted to be a chartered engineer that is why now your expectation you all are here you wanted to be a chartered engineer that is why you participated for this uh, uh, workshop or seminar today uh, to get some knowledge who is this chartered engineer a chartered engineer is capable of assuming personal professional responsibility for the analysis and application of engineering principles in the fundamentals fundamental process of investigation planning designing construction operation maintenance management and development of engineering works or on the other hand research works so you can see a chartered engineer should be capable of uh, he has to use his uh, this scientific knowledge for the application of engineering he is having engineering uh, knowledge of engineering principles for the fundamental process of investigation planning designing construction so on like that so once you pass out from university you won't have this characteristic so you have to gain this gradually so he should involve with the identification of solutions to problem problems management of projects with high risk and resources intensive projects you know now projects means now various various projects are uh, in progress in this country building projects high rise building projects uh, road construction work bridge construction work various various uh, new uh, bridges new type of bridges uh, expressways uh, all these things are there so they all are there is a high risk also and resources resources also intensive cost is also incentive so how to manage these projects there are so many uh, issues technical issues management issues are coming so how you give solutions to those problems and you you are engineering judgments and at last this uh, communication communicate your ideas clearly concisely and intelligibly to others so this communication is very important for engineers because uh, i know when i went to uva province uh, engineers working in government organizations in that area they say uh, for a month at least there is no opportunity for them to speak at least uh, 2050 english words all things are happening in sinhala language so that is a one issue so being engineers uh, communication is very important uh, this communication is uh, important means not only for locally when you go and work or you are attending for a seminar or some workshop or anything in outside the country you have to express your views in uh, english language so that is why uh, this institution is so keen on this communication ability of our members uh, institution in cpd uh there is a uh, sectional committee uh, continuing professional development uh, they are continuing various courses for the benefit of uh, this young engineers so corporate member of the iesl one who has satisfied the council of the iesl that he has attained such standard of education training and experience these are the three uh, key things education training and experience so this is these are the three things uh, mainly uh, checked by the isl to award you the status of chartered engineer so this engineers become competent through mixture of education and professional development that is education as well as experience both sometimes arguments are coming with various parties uh, education is not important uh, this experience is enough for engineers so that is also another issue uh, we have to address among our engineers in present uh, situation in keeping with international advancement of the recognition 
and reg registration of engineering professionals, the IESL proposes to introduce a competence-based assessment. Now, uh, this uh, entire professional review process is based on competence-based, not only education, but also after fulfilling certain certain uh, your education requirements, uh, competency. Main three main things are roles, responsibilities, and competencies. These three are there. So competency is very important. So this corporate membership is granted uh, on assessment based on competency. That is why uh, we are saying competency-based assessment. So these are the five competences we are going to assess during the professional review process. First thing is, first two thing is related to engineering. That is uh, understanding of engineering principles. Being an engineer, you should in a position to understand these engineering principles behind any activity, what you are doing. That is the difference between a layman and engineer. Otherwise, all are doing engineering. But this is the main important point, uh, understanding of engineering principles. The basic foundation has laid down at your university's uh, career. They, are, they have taught you various, various engineering principles in various, various fields. It may be structural, it may be fluids, it may be uh, highways, it may be from mechanical engineers, uh, vibration or some other thing. Uh, electrical engineers uh, generation or heavy machine electrical machines or like that there are so many areas all these things are supported with engineering principles thereafter with engineering principles using those things how you practically apply these things when you are doing your day-to-day -day work using your knowledge you are having a your knowledge mathematics uh, scientific knowledge using uh, on top of that you are having some engineering principles using the using this engineering principles and everything how you apply those things uh, in your day-to-day -day work and the third competence is managerial involvement your management involvement then interpersonal skills then the professional conduct all these things uh, we will discuss but this is the basically what I want to know, uh, inform you regarding uh, these five competences. So normally for this uh, professional uh, review examination, requirements are there, seven requirements. That is, first thing is education. Second one is training. This training is... Uh, divided into two parts. One is recognized training, other one is responsible experience. You can see one is training, other one is responsible experience. This training is coming under two uh, headings, that is recognized training, responsible experience. Third one is design, fourth one is CPD, fifth one is B paper, Sixth uh, interview or viva with what do you call again? You have to sit for a paper, what we call A paper. Then A paper is there, B paper is there, interview is there. Uh, you have to you, uh, <clears throat> follow and you have to show some uh, number of hours of CPD hours. Then you have to submit a design. Uh, you have to gain design, uh, whether you become a design designer or not. Uh, you must have some basic knowledge about designing. Uh, that is why design is compulsory. Then the training and uh, also you have to fulfill some certain certain education requirements also. So these academic uh, qualifications are uh, clearly specified in uh, Rule 4.1 of the uh, professional review rules. Uh, basically, uh, 
I am not going to read those things uh, because uh, time is, uh, we got delayed also, time is also limited. Uh, basically, the, there should be a four year engineering degree, uh, which is uh, acceptable to, uh, which is recognized by IESL law, accredited by IESL. That should be a four year continu uh, continuously followed uh, degree. Uh, and uh, there may be other exceptions. Those things are uh, evaluated by case by case by IESL. But uh, generally, uh, their requirement is a four year uh, engineering degree program, which is recognized by IESL. Uh, now, uh, you know that uh, state, in, uh, state universities, uh, all are uh, now, nowadays, all are uh, admitting uh, with. Uh, very good uh, GC advanced level uh, qualifications. Uh, not only uh, this uh, three years, minimum requirement is three years passes, but uh, most of these uh, uh, candidates, students, uh, they obtain uh, two A's, uh, one B or three A's, uh, three B's like that. Uh, but uh, IESL has now uh, implemented the rule uh, to obtain the associate membership, minimum requirement is advanced level uh, requirement is Two C's, one S passes, one S pass. Uh, that is the requirement. Uh, I, I think um, by now all these uh, state university entrants, uh, they are fulfilling this requirement. Uh, those who are not fulfilling this uh, requirement, uh, advanced level failures, uh, uh, they have to sit for an entry qualification exam. That is also uh, conducted by IES. Then. Uh, recognize training and responsible experience gained by candidate. Uh, then you have to submit a report on recognized training and responsible experience. This is uh, very clearly stated in rule number six, how to submit your report. Uh, these all academic qualifications, your prior requirements. Then uh, this training and responsible experience you are gaining after uh, you are uh, coming into the uh, industry. Uh, so that is uh, mentioned in rule five, uh, how we uh, consider the, what, are, uh, what is recognized training and responsible experience. Uh, then uh, how to uh, write this report uh, that is also in rule number six of the PR rules. Then uh, design and calculations you have to submit uh, with the BOQ, that is also stated in rule number seven of this PR rules. Then the VIVA by a panel of two or more members, corporate members, to assess the candidates' com compliance with these five core competences. Uh, now, uh, you all are doing this preparation of reports and submission of design calculations. All these things are you are doing uh, <coughs> outside the institution. So you are submitting those things. After that, only uh, facing, you have to face for this viva. So once you face this viva, um, there are only you, I think, uh, face uh, this uh, answering these questions and uh, everything is there. Um, that is the point where most of our candidates, uh, students, uh, fail to obtain a successful pass mark. We'll see. The, this is the presentation. You have to, during the viva, before the viva, you have to do a presentation. This presentation should not exceed 20 minutes. How many, uh, even we advise these candidates not to take much more time more than 20 minutes they come with 40 50 slides that will take nearly 40 minutes or 50 minutes more than sometimes <coughs> so this uh, powerpoint presentation should limit to 20 minutes that is the also uh, mentioned in rule number eight then the written test, what we call a paper, details of that also mentioned in rule 9.2, then B paper, 
that is uh, set out in rule number 9.3. Now, after you submitting all these uh, things, uh, uh, ISL Secretariat will check all these things. Uh, eligibility and all these things will be checked. And uh, they will decide this uh, particular candidate uh, is uh, eligible for sitting for this PR examination. Now, training. What is this training? Uh, ISL requirement is 48 months, a total period of 48 months, that is four years. <coughs> that was divided into two parts. I said, uh, recognized training and responsible experience. Now, uh, you know, this training should afford the trainee adequate opportunity to adapt himself from an academic to industrial environment. I, tell, I told you earlier, uh, once you finish your academic era from university, you have joined industry. So that environment is entirely different. During this period, you have to acquire practical skills and you have to en enhance your knowledge of the work essential for future employment to be able to shoulder responsibility with confidence, confidence under this is the most important thing. When you join the industry, your management or supervision knowledge is very less. You are, but you are very fluent in your theoretical knowledge. You know your principles, uh, engineering principles, as I said earlier, but your practical knowledge, not that much. So in the early stage, there is a person a senior engineer or some kind of a sup uh, supervisory staff member to guide you. So that is why we are telling the initial stage is training. You are going under training. Uh, you are not familiar with various various uh, construction methods uh, uh, or construction equipment, uh, safety measures, all these things. But there is a person immediately above you, uh, we can call him supervisor or your uh, senior engineer or project manager or somebody is there to guide you. You can't take decisions that you, the way you want. He, once you do something uh, or once you uh, he give you an assignment, you have to do that and show it to him and get his views whether you have done it correctly or not. That is why this uh, supervision level is maximum at that point but with the time when you gain experience with that experience you know you learn how to address questions how to take decisions how to make judgments everything and gradually uh, your degree of taking uh, responsibility goes up in the same time, your supervisor or your uh, superior will decrease the supervision provided to you. So that is, uh, you can see from uh, <coughs> uh, earlier started with zero responsibility. Now that has, with the time it has going up and the 100%, we can say uh, supervision was there, that also going down. Uh, because your superior things that you can take responsibility, you can make decision like that. So that is why the initial period, initial two years, we consider as a training period. And uh, thereafter, gradually, you are becoming, uh, you are allowed to take, you are uh, granted with uh, responsible works, and uh, you are considered as a person who can shoulder responsibility. So this is uh, what I told, 24 months, uh, they have divided into two. Uh, first 24 months, recognized training, and the balance 24 months considered as uh, responsible experience. So first you can hear, you can see here the difference, recognized training. After 24 months, 
uh, we assume that uh, you can take responsibility responsibility then the experience that you gain is considered as responsible so this uh, recognized training is uh, isl has recognized certain certain organizations those are called uh, isl approved or recognized in organizations isl visits those places and uh, they ch check certain certain requirements they have to fulfill to train these young engineers they must have so required resources chartered engineers uh, uh, or otherwise construction equipment like that uh, or design office various things so the based on the guidelines set out uh, laid down by isl if these organizations are fulfilling those requirements i say isl is granted them or considered them as approved organizations so this approved organizations uh, when young engineers the junior engineers join and when they gain experience those are counted as uh, recognized training so this recognized training uh, during your university time uh, your uh, time you are following uh, this uh, implant training uh, six months uh, that is also mandatory uh, 24 weeks uh, so for this 20 out of these 24 weeks uh, they will take uh, six uh, months uh, training uh, as uh, recognized training and balance uh, training uh, they have to obtain after graduation so after graduation then uh, 24 minus 6 uh, you need another 18 months so that 18 months uh, you have to gain six months uh, design office experience also then one month uh, then one year is left that is uh, where you have to gain experience in construction Now, uh, this uh, I talked about these uh, recognized places. Uh, now, uh, due to uh, this uh, lack of, there are not much recognized places. Because of that, uh, ISL has classified uh, nearly uh, uh, six categories. One category is, uh, they are the organizations uh, organizations who have not applied for approval but may have necessary resources for approval such as chartered engineers relevant field of uh, full-time employment various various things that is one category the second category is uh, those organizations who have not been renewed they have earlier uh, applied and uh, obtained the renewal uh, but uh, they are giving uh, this uh, recognition only for a limited period, three years. Uh, those days gave five years, now reduced to three years. So after three years, they have to renew this one. So they have not renewed, but uh, still uh, they are having the resources. Then the third category is the, the organizations which have the physical resources, but do not have chartered engineers for supervision of the candidates. Because this responsible experience I told about your supervisor or the uh, project manager or the chief project manager or project director, uh, normally IESL expect that person to be a chartered engineer, corporate member of the institution. So all resources are there, that, but uh, certain places uh, we have noted, they don't have uh, chartered engineers. Then the other places, uh, uh, other one is uh, non-engineering organizations uh, where these engineers are working in banks uh, and some other institutions are there. They are non-engineering organizations, but uh, they are doing uh, uh, maintenance work or some they, times they using these engineers, they carry out their own construction work like that. Uh, that kind of uh, category that is uh, non-engineering organizations. Then the last one uh, recently we added that is uh, there are foreign companies here. They are doing massive projects in Sri Lanka and sometimes uh, our, our members going and working overseas. Uh, they are also handling major projects. Uh, that kind of organization which is not recognized by IESL. So for each and every category, uh, the method of uh, 
calculating uh, this uh, experience is uh, given in uh, an extra j there is a uh, an extra called uh, in this uh, pr rules an extra j uh, an extra j 0.11 it says uh, uh, the category a uh, they will count only 50 percent then the category b they will count 75 uh, percent needed uh, provided that they have to fulfill some uh, requirements also mentioned there then the uh, this uh, category c uh, uh, how they what uh, the additional months they have to do uh, this uh, foreign countries uh, this uh, non engineering organizations how to deal with those uh, candidates then the uh, other one is uh, for uh, foreign uh, employment in uh, foreign organizations or foreign companies or, uh, or those who are working in uh, sri lanka but they don't have this uh, uh, isl recognition so they have categorized into two categories one category is uh, the our engineers associate associate members who are working in uh, large uh, companies uh, who are having uh, at least cda grade construction industry development authority gradation is their contractors uh, c1 and above uh, they want to if they are fulfilling that requirement uh, there is a way of evaluating them then the other candidates mm, all these candidates uh, i think uh, isl has taken council has approved that decision uh, they these uh, who are coming under category e uh, they have to face for a viva normally we are having two member panel they have to here face for a five member panel uh, these five members uh, three from construction industry who are uh, dealt with construction and two from uh, design area expertise in designs so they have to face uh, interview in uh, five member panel So uh, now here again, this is uh, what I early explained. This responsible experience means you have to gain experience under a uh, guidance of a corporate member of the institution. So all these things, what I explained earlier, the uh, decision making, uh, communication, judgment, uh, all these things, uh, you had to be very thorough in these areas at the end of your uh, four year uh, training period a civil engineer candidate shall have also a minimum 24 months responsible experience and out of which 12 months should be responsible construction experience uh, in responsible experience also 24 months uh, are there so out of that 24 months again six months for responsible design experience and that balance 18 out of that 18 one 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 year or 12 months should be responsible construction experience that is uh, specifically mentioned in this uh, document so design uh, again one year is compulsory this one year design uh, experience uh, split into two parts one is six months uh, training uh, and the other one is uh, six months uh, responsible uh, experience part so at the, the design office first uh, you have to at the initial stage some uh, engineers are coming to design office after so many years they are not touch with uh, design uh, criteria so codes and various things so initially uh, they will be given uh, proper training uh, proper knowledge about the design office and codes and all these things how to calculate how to calculate this uh, uh, loading systems or how to visit sites and get collection of uh, information uh, site surveys which are uh, needed for the design all these things they have to do in the first six months and uh, during that period they have to attend for minor minor uh, this uh, not so much uh, complicated designs but uh, to gain refresh their knowledge uh, they have to do attend all kind of uh, designs uh, to refresh their knowledge after that only i think uh, normally you will get the uh, 
design what you want to submit for this uh, uh, professional review examination at the seventh uh, or eighth uh, that last three months time. Then uh, continuing professional continuing professional development uh, that is also a must. Uh, now uh, I think Council uh, ISL is going to make it mandatory for E1 for corporate members to develop their continuing professional uh, activities. Uh, uh, in this respect, you have to maintain a logbook. This logbook you have to write from the uh, after you obtain your associate membership. Uh, you have to write and get it signed by the supervising engineer. Uh, what is happening is uh, normally uh, they are not updating their uh, CPD records, but before submitting their application, so before the uh, VIVA uh, interview date, uh, they get uh, write all these things in one night using various various color pens to indicate that uh, they have wrote this uh, written this uh, in uh, different time. But don't do that. Uh, but everything is getting digitalized. So ISL is very near future. I think uh, they are having a idea to uh, have go for this. Uh, also, this submission of this uh, CPD record books also in uh, online. There, I think uh, you can't do that kind of uh, one overnight writing uh, CPD record business uh, every month or like that. Uh, you have to submit. There is a frequency of uh, submissions dates uh, by that dates you have to submit your cpd records so now this uh, uh, dates of professional reviews are uh, changed uh, earlier there were sessions uh, cycles now uh, that cycles are not there february or august september like that uh, now uh, any candidate can submit uh, at any time you are design uh, your application for professional review uh, that is also very clearly mentioned in this uh, handbook. Uh, this uh, once you submit this uh, application, uh, it says how to uh, what are the supporting documents you have to submit, when, uh, when to submit the design. All these things are there. So on, online submission is there. So once they check the eligibility of your application and the uh, the requirements uh, they will call you for an interview and if you successful in that interview uh, uh, your name will be going for the uh, approval of the psmc professional standard management committee after that it goes to council the particular council date will be the effective date of your uh, charter date Now, this is uh, briefly about uh, how to submit your applications and experience report. All these things are uh, shown in Annex F. What are the documents that you have to submit? All those things are mentioned in the Annex F. So now, uh, when you are writing your report, uh, uh, there are some tables. Don't deviate from these tables. Uh, those are the require. Uh, those are the uh, standard formats. So uh, there are three categories. Uh, you have three tables of uh, you have to submit. First one is before graduation. Uh, you experience what you gain before graduation. That is industrial training. Six months you have to indicate place of work, uh, your workstation, uh, duration, uh, designation and role, your training engineer, or whatever the thing, then under whom you work, then the certifying officer. Uh, this is this form is there for you to write your experience prior to obtaining your graduation. Then after obtaining graduation, you have to submit two charts. One is responsible experience, other one is recognized training. Those three tables are there. Please follow the format given in that uh, booklet. Uh, after that, you have to sum up and show uh, if 
we are going by any exceptions, that is also you can mention there, that provision is there. After that, you have to sum up and show whether you have fulfilled that 48 months uh, total requirement. Out of that, uh, 12 months should be designed, six months uh, uh, responsible and uh, six months recognized. The main objective of the uh, report, then you have to write the report uh, about your training. You have to uh, mainly uh, object of this report on training and experience is to demonstrate that the candidate has achieved a degree of professional competence. Because this is going to be, as I told you earlier, totally based on competence-based assessment. Uh, you have to write uh, most highlight on your uh, achievements in uh, all work, what you have done. Uh, and the uh, competences that you have, how you met those competences. Here yeah, in this report, the candidate should display his or her understanding and practice of the five core competences wherever possible. So words, don't write too much of words, all are limited. Uh, this is uh, very clear. In your training part, should not exceed 2,000 words. Don't write. Uh, though you are having enough experience, some are coming after 15 years, uh, working with 15 years experience. We know that you are, you have you can't uh, summarize that into concise manner in 2,000 words. But you have to anyhow. You have to select, give priority, and uh, write within that words, otherwise that will be uh, returned back to you asking to uh, follow these uh, given limits. Uh, this uh, prior to the, they have given a guideline saying that uh, before graduation part, I said uh, you can write maximum 100 words, so recognize training part 5,000 words and the uh, responsible experience uh, thousand words. Then the competency part, this is the important part. You have to uh, write how you achieve these uh, five competences, giving examples. Uh, you have to convince the reviewer that you have enough uh, experience and you have achieved what the institution expects from these competences uh, to a certain degree. Uh, you have devote uh, 2,500 maximum words. This uh, first uh, information presented in rules 6.32 and 6.3 will be demonstrated in the extent to which the candidate complies with the first two competences to as set out in the Annex B of the PR rules. Please refer Annex B. Annex B uh, gives you uh, all these details. How to uh, write these uh, competences. It's uh, There are certain, certain tables are there uh, for e five competences. One side, uh, below that uh, competence, there are certain, certain elements. In front of that element, it is better for you to, it says, uh, give examples, giving examples how you make these uh, competences. So please give some uh, examples without writing some figures. Uh, figure means uh, you are referring a para paragraph number. But uh, if you give in that particular paragraph, how you, what is the uh, activity that you have gain that uh, particular element of that uh, competence. So this uh, report should uh, submit, uh, this, all these things are in the uh, PR manual, general de description about the project, a summary of the period, everything should be there. Uh, the work, key, key, key experience, major experience that you have gained should be specifically mentioned. 
not without riding uh, this road length this much uh, uh, there are side drains uh, there are uh, the buildings are with this much of uh, flows like that but you have to hire, uh, specifically mention what are the experience you gain what are how you applied your engineering knowledge uh, what are the engineering principles you applied like that uh, you have to highlight those things so all these things are regarding the uh, how to contents of the report uh, i will take this you have to submit uh, there are some annexes you have some to sub, uh, support your work sometimes you have to sub, uh, uh, attach uh, photographs to organization chart signed by the uh, immediate supu uh, superior those things you have to attach those are mentioned in this uh, report uh, uh, then uh, the report should be well structured when you are if you follow these things it will automatically becoming a structured report then ultimately finally uh, some uh, uh, so your corporate member of the institution has to uh, certify your report saying that that is true so that is regarding uh, all this report because uh, i know that today i little bit uh, uh, presented this uh, presentation not in usual manner little bit hurry and because of this uh, at the beginning it this technical issue was there and after that the time limitation is also there your 7 o'clock meeting is there uh, so uh, regarding interview uh, uh, this is uh, what i want to know i uh, already explained you regarding the presentation the competence based assessment is followed by that uh, normally this is the part uh, you are getting uh, uh, upset or sometimes get uh, scared when interview part when uh, two panel members are there uh, but uh, normally we expect these panel members to be uh, uh be friendly uh address all these uh, questions so everything in a manner not to make this uh, candidate to excite or to become uh, scared about these things uh, but uh, when you come here we come to when you face the interview normally we spend 5 minutes for introduction then uh, uh, we will ask you to do your presentation it will take 20 minutes then uh, five competences are there uh, depending on the nature of your experience uh, first two are related to engineering issues so we spend 10 minutes for clarifying things or questioning for competence 3 and 4 8 minutes of competence five also eight minutes then closure uh, at last uh, we will spend another five minutes or six minutes uh, to uh, ask whether candidates uh, feedback whether we have covered him enoughly sometimes we uh, candidate feel that uh, he prepared for he came prepared for something and uh, interview panel asked some other thing uh, which, have, which has no relevance or something like that. Uh, so that is why uh, before that candidate leave, uh, it is normally we used to ask whether are you satisfied about the interview? Uh, do you think that we have covered you enoughly or do you want us to cover any more some uncovered areas like that? Candidate is having the uh, opportunity to say, yes, uh, you have not covered this area like that. Uh, it is not a issue. Uh, they will cover it also. So uh, based on this, uh, it will need 75 minutes, uh, normally 90 minutes, one and a half hours. Uh, you have to be there one and a half hours uh, this, uh, for this uh, interview. So candidate shall make a 20 minute presentation that should be based on candidates experience and design work. So. Uh, 
all these things uh, when you are submitting your experience report and design work you know that uh, this panel members are going to uh, question from you because they are not enemies of you they they have given an assignment they have to check your knowledge and they have to recommend to the council to the institution this uh, whether these candidate or candidates are meeting the required uh, uh, level what we uh, ISL expect that is what they are doing so for that they need to clarify certain certain things that is why they are asking from you a report what uh, we believe that you have written in uh, that report what you have done genuinely you can't write uh, what someone else uh, have uh, has done into your account someone else's design as considered as your design so when uh, in that cases in such cases uh, when these uh, panel members start asking questions uh, you are in trouble because uh, you are going to answer you have to come across a situation where you have not actually practiced you have not done so that is why uh, uh, this most of these uh, candidates get scared about this uh, panel members actually no need for that that kind of a scare uh, or oh, fairness should not be there they they will just ask what you have done they will totally ask from your report so don't get scared uh, definitely they will ask from the work what you have done the design what you have done so if you have uh, copied the design without knowing any knowledge then there is a issue the presentation uh, shall be very uh, clearly convince the panel members how you achieve the five competences without uh, saying uh, normally uh, we have observed uh, not all some candidates they used to uh, talk about various various uh, long calculations and various things but uh, uh, that is not what we expect what what we expect is how you met the requirements of these competences so other one is uh, this presentation should not be a boring one uh, whether it is uh, boring or not uh, we have to listen watch that and listen for that one that is uh, up to the panel members but it is up to you to present a uh, presentation which is not a boring one uh, that should give the interesting uh, should be an interesting one to the panel members normally questioning will start with questions based upon on uh, the uh, contents of the presentation uh, as i told you earlier reviewers will normally cover all the competences during the interview these are the five competences i told you earlier the uh, grading the assessment uh, there is a marking scheme they are marking level 1 2 uh, 3 and 4 that uh, they decide the level 4 is the performs actively in a wide range of complex and uh, and non routing situations significant individual responsibility or autonomy can involve others in the activity so that is the maximum they are giving uh, the can uh, super the panel member feels that he has done his job uh, perfectly well he is knowledgeable he can uh, he is in a position to take decision responsibility all these things without any of these things he will give you uh, uh, that uh, rank of 4 otherwise uh, depending on that 3 uh, 2 1 he uh, will give like this uh, performs activity with significant supervision little or no individual responsibility like that uh, that is marking scheme is there so these five competences are there so this is how uh, you have to be perform uh, competency level to engineering uh, 3 and 4 gradings uh, that competency level you have to obtain that is compulsory uh, if anybody obtains uh, below 3 say uh, for 
competency one you are obtaining four and the second one you are obtaining two uh, that is not accepted it is compulsory for everybody to obtain minimum three or above then the other three competency levels you can obtain two three or four but again there is another limitation out of these three you have to obtain another ranking of three then altogether you have to obtain minimum level uh, competency level of three for three competences uh, to be successful a candidate has to score at least level three in three competences including one and two that is what uh, i want to emphasize uh, one and two compulsory you have to obtain uh, level three and another three from the balance uh, and uh, level two from other two so uh, to obtain the pass in this uh, pass mark in this uh, viva you have to obtain three level three uh, this uh, level 3 in three competences and level 2 in two competences this uh, a paper that is uh, totally uh, again regarding your uh, work experience the question two questions are given to you that is uh, totally uh, based on your work experience they are time is given is one and one and a half hours uh, expected to write about 1000 words pass marks is 50 uh, again uh, marking scheme is there i will show you how they will give marks for this uh, a paper this is how they give your marks for you say you have to structure structuring and presentation you will be given 20 marks and mandatory marks also there you have to there are, under this uh, marking scheme there are mandatory minimum pass marks is there are there uh, for first one structuring and presentation you have to obtain at least 10 the 10 is uh, this 20 is uh, split into four that is how you structure this one so when you are writing essay you have to properly structure that one then completeness, then how you present that one, then the neatness. Uh, then the uh, next one is the uh, 40 marks is given. It's very important, 40 marks are there. Uh, relevance of the knowledge, relevance and knowledge. Sometimes you are writing to uh, get this uh, the thousand words, you are writing unwanted things. Don't write unwanted things always write the relevant things and the uh, this will test your knowledge also the relevance of the content will give 20 marks knowledge will get 20 marks then uh, clarity and argument uh, you also get 20 marks then uh, finally grammar uh, expression and syntax everything uh, those things also get 20 marks uh, so the pass mark is uh, 50 of hundred so uh, that is regarding the whole process of uh, this uh, professional review process uh, uh, you have to keep this again as i told you the day belongs to you not to the reviewer reviewer may be experienced person but uh, the days belongs to means you have to show your uh, work experience, your competences, uh, your all what the responsibilities you have uh, had in your workplaces. All these things you have to come out. Whatever the thing that you think that uh, that will support for you, you have to come. That is by your day. The reviewer has uh, it is not his day. He has nothing to do to tell about his experience or anything. He is there to assess your uh experience and uh, your capabilities 
so uh, when you are answering questions uh, you have to answer all these things in confident manner that is why uh, uh, i used uh, we selected this was confidently face confidently means you have to face this in, in uh, interview why you are confidently because you are not going to do any wrong thing you are not going to submit any false or bogus reports you are genuinely going there and you are going to tell what you have done I don't get excited uh, so if you lose your confidence that means the start of your fall from that point uh, if you uh, all questions what they ask you you will give wrong questions so don't get excited be uh, strong be confident and uh, answer in a smart manner but sometimes some candidates are going to be too smart so because of that too smart they are going to uh, they have to ultimately face the repercussions of those things also so uh, that is what uh, is uh, things uh, the time is not there otherwise i would have shown you some uh, yeah so you can see can you uh, hear me can you hear me yes sir we can hear yeah you can see this is a typical uh, i want to show uh, now uh, this is not a thing to laugh uh, this is one of our own member uh, how he has uh, written this a paper you can see uh, uh, the sri lanka is a very small and very beautiful country see the spellings country ഉസിയു സി Yes, now, we can, we can, see. can you see now? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Now uh, you can read. Uh, this is uh, just to uh, uh, mistakes. Now this is uh, one reason for failure of this. Now they come and say we have. Uh, I got an easy topic. I wrote, but you can see the mistakes uh, they have done. This uh, question related to a uh, uh, road construction. so this uh, candidate uh, how he has uh, what are the mistakes he has done uh, you can see uh, this uh, 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 he says the sri lanka is very small and very beautiful country country spellings now you won't uh, believe this culture now you have followed four year engineering degree after that you have followed some four year working experience uh, but uh, english mistakes are there we are making this kind of mistakes so uh, you can see our country geological geological spellings aesthetic okay, situations is very good conditions for increasing our country beauty beautiful stuff so this uh, if you start from this first uh, first point the, the sri lanka is a very small country and very beautiful country our country geological uh, aesthetic situation is very good con condition for increasing our country beauty so see now the how he has constructed this sentences she is not uh, he or she is not in a position to construct a simple sentence she wanted to tell so many ideas and ultimately she that is why i told ended up with the real mess and with telling mistakes so many mistakes are there uh, there has a flat terrain you can see there has flat terrain rolling terrain uh, terrain spellings 
mountain terrain mountain conditions so the sentences fully out no meaning no properly constructed in a meaningful manner in the hill area has a b c d type roads i am working in road development authority now he want i know he wanted to tell uh, he is a rda employee that this a b c d roads are coming under their purview like, like that but uh, she couldn't put that into uh, this is communication issue idea is there she can't uh, he or she can't uh, construct a simple sentence giving a uh, meaning so structuring uh, this uh, grammar spelling uh, context all things are out now the lot of a and b class a and b class situated in the hill area some roads are two lane see uh, rda engineer must be an executive engineer or maybe an engineer's representative mm, not in a position to write the word correctly lane but road engineers so very pathetic situation we have to improve our knowledge uh, <coughs> population growth i hope you all can see this one uh, yeah population is uh, she want to tell because of this population population growth uh, traffic jams and traffic congestions are there but uh, uh, this candidates uh, vocabulary and uh, english knowledge and uh, basic grammar everything is very poor but one thing i will tell you for this particular candidate uh, she uh, he never gave up her attempt she gave me calls she gave me wanted to uh, improve her shortcomings she wanted uh, me to uh, give some additional uh, topics and write and correct me so i did everything because of this uh, junior candidate we want to see our members in a good position so uh, she uh, set for in, in a subsequent <coughs> attempt and she obtained uh, i think uh, nearly 63 or 72 marks Uh, but uh, don't hesitate a similar thing happened in uh, waimba district also when i went to waimba district uh, waimba uh, province uh, one candidate told uh, sir we selected to engineering faculty because of mathematics we are good in mathematics but we are very poor in uh, writing uh, essays can't you allow us to write this essays in singhala so that is his request so i said no you can't allow institution wants to have this our members to participate various various events not only locally but globally so please spend some more time and improve your english knowledge so this particular candidate <coughs> second time also came fail third time he came but that time i noted he is well improved so i asked what's the reason he said his wife is a clerical staff working in a pradesh in sabah somewhere she is very poor in english but to familiar with pronunciation and everything he used to speak with her in english what is the whatever the words he knows he he spoke with that lady in english he used to watch television he used to listen for debates and uh, radio programs in english medium so ultimately he got through the charter in the third shy but as a very good candidate with good performance so nothing is impossible for you
you all don't get <coughs> uh, think that we are failures like that you are not going to be failures you can do something you are very brilliant people you are intelligent you can uh, collectively we all are very strong people genius so you can do yes, sir, uh, i'm kokile i'm not disturbing you but uh, you have much vocabulary uh, to deliver to us but time is not permitting yeah. us to yeah yeah that is yeah okay, okay thank you that is what I, i want to tell uh, lastly yes sir uh, don't uh, uh, think that you are failures failures are the pillars of success so keeping that in mind if you want anything to clarify i am always there to help you uh, take down my number if you want not 77771235 not 77771235 or engineer kokila will give you uh, so thank you very much for participating for this one i am extremely sorry what has happened at the beginning and uh, i wanted to actually have a much better presentation but uh, with that technical failure something happened uh, i couldn't uh, do that uh, properly uh, so if you have any questions you are always welcome uh, you can contact me uh, thank you very much uh, if you have any questions uh, now it is no time for that one uh, i think uh, engineer arandra will do something for that one uh, some arrangements thank you very much good night yes uh, thank you very much sir uh, for your valuable time and for your valuable thoughts and giving all the directions which is required and expected as uh, associate engineers associate members of isl so uh, thank you very much sir again uh, today we uh, got the uh, all the inputs from the resource person uh, engineer senior engineer uh, dhanupala uh, and i should thank to him especially on behalf of civil engineering sectional committee uh, on behalf of uh, chairman uh, professor mtr jaising sir and also uh, uh, senior engineer manjula samar singh uh, the guidance given by them uh, are really appreciated and uh, senior engineer uh, madam kamala agunawardena also uh, should mention uh, thank you very much madam and uh, all the participants uh, who joined here thank you very much Uh, there are a few questions uh, we will sort in them uh, accordingly uh, we have created a whatsapp group so through that we will uh, continue and we will answer those things so we are going to uh, to join the senior section committee meeting uh, within next couple of minutes so finally i would like to thank you all for participating to this uh, session so this will be the first uh, this will be the starting uh, for this year to Uh, move forward and to get more uh, pr or professional reviews and uh, become uh, chartered engineers so uh, we will uh, go together and uh, sort it out our uh, problems uh, where we are facing uh, at the moment so again thank you very much uh, for all you all to join with us so see you again uh, with another uh, this kind of event uh, with that uh, we will conclude so we will share the uh, updates through the whatsapp group thank yeah, you somebody much. asked my telephone number uh, again can you tell uh, everybody yes uh, i will uh, communicate it uh, and i will put again to see uh, to them all uh, to the chat box uh, it is uh, not 773 into 77 77 12355 uh, with that uh, we will conclude thank you very much good night okay thank you very much good night everybody have a pleasant night